Hey everyone, welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica, thanks for joining me. So, I am so excited to be participating in the I Love Plaid gift away playlist. All of the creators partaking are Plaid ambassadors and some of my absolute favorite creators. All the products that I'm using in today's video are all made by Plaid and I'll show you a couple of my favorite products too. Well, one of the best things is that there's an amazing giveaway. You can enter to win by watching and liking each video in the playlist. Each creator will mention a single product for the giveaway. So comment which product the creator mentions. One lucky person who comments on all the videos will be chosen at random to receive a gift box full of plaid products. You must live in the continental US to participate. How cool is that? You get to find some creative inspiration from Seriously Talented Crafters and you get a chance to win some awesome plaid products. It's a win-win. I will include all of this information in the description box. Okay, so today I'm making this light up rustic cart. Let's get into it. I cut this heart from some plywood and drilled 35 holes to outline it. Later, those will get some string lights to make this girl glow. Before I start painting, I'm marking an outline. I don't want my paint to go past that point and I want the lights on the inside of that line. I also add an outline to the smaller hearts. The big heart I'll paint with ceram coat bright red. Normally I'd do two coats, but since this is a rustic piece, I'll just do one. I quite like doing a rustic piece. They're always quick and simple, and you can be imperfect and that plays to the style. I base coat the small hearts with ceram coat bubblegum pink. I'm leaving a small space between the small and large heart, not worrying if it's perfect. On to the details, I'll pinstripe the big heart first with white. With a liner brush, I'll start in the center and pull straight down, reloading as needed. This liner brush is from Plaid's Folk Art One Stroke series. It's a number two script liner. I always buy these brushes. With a minimal amount of care, they will last for years. Def of Plaid Faith. As you can see, my lines are carefree, a wee bit wiggly. I do come back through and go over my lines to make them a wee bit bolder. I'll flank the white pinstripes with bubblegum pinstripes. Whenever I'm doing a long stroke like this, I'll move my entire arm, not just my hand. It really does make it easier, for me anyway. To add the lines on the pink hearts, I'm using another plaid brush. It's a number eight shader. I reload as needed, and again, I move the whole arm. I'm just gonna make some intersecting lines to give it a kind of plaid checked effect.
Now for my all-time favorite plaid product, Folk Art Floating Medium, which I'll use alongside watermelon to shade the pink hearts. I'll dip my brush into the floating medium, then stroke it on my plate to load the bristles. This is a three quarter inch flat brush, also by plaid. I'll scoop the watermelon onto one corner of my brush, stroke it on my plate to get the gradient of color. With the paint side of my brush at the edge of the pink, I'll shade around the heart, reloading as needed. I think I'll link some of my more detailed projects in the description box. There are several that have much more shading and highlighting using the float medium. The larger heart will be shaded with ceram coat black cherry. I just go completely around the perimeter of the inside of the heart. Again, reloading both with the floating medium and the color as needed. I cut this cute heart-shaped key from MDF, I'll base coat it with burnt sienna, and I'll paint both sides. With ceram coat burnt umber, I'll shade in the key's details. I'm keeping the details simple, basically just following the shape of the key. To add some aged sprinkle spots, I'll dip my old toothbrush into some water, then into the burnt umber. I'll pull my thumb across the brush, and I'll do that in black too. I'll give my entire surface a light sanding, and I'll wipe it clean. Another favorite product is Folk Art Antique Medium. Super easy to use, and the cleanup. Just brush it on, and wipe it off. It leaves a beautifully stained surface. I stain my entire piece, including the sides, and I'll also do the back. I've also stained the stand pieces, which are made from one by twos. You'll see. I'll use this utility hinge to connect my stand leg to the perpendicular brace. I cut the leg to about 20 inches and the perpendicular brace is about six inches. 
I'll mark the holes onto both pieces and then I'll drill pilot holes. I also drill pilot holes about an inch from the ends of my brace. This is where I'll screw the brace to the heart. I'll add some wood glue to my brace. I'll let it dry a wee bit. And once it's grabbed the wood, I'll add my screws. I'll add these eye screws, one into the stand, and one into the heart, like this. I want them alongside each other. I'll screw on my hinge, making sure that the stand's leg is level with the bottom of the heart. When it's assembled, it'll work like a picture frame stand. I've cut a couple inches of wire that I'll wrap around the eye screw on the heart. Then, I'll thread it through the one on the leg and curve the end into a hook. This will keep the leg in place when it's in an upright position and it'll also allow you to store it flat. I'll spray my heart and the key with clear matte sealer. I have some buttons here and I'll use my fabric fix glue to stack my buttons. These will embellish the pink hearts. I'm just gonna glue them one on top of the other. And I'll glue them right in the center. For the large heart, I'll make a bow from a bit of raffia and a fabric strip. With the raffia, I make a loop and then another across the tails over each other and twist on my chenille stem. To make the fabric bow, I'll fold one end over to make a loop and then I'll cross the other end over it. It kind of looks like a scarf. And I have to fuss with it a little bit until I get it just so. Then I'll gather it in the middle and I'll twist the raffia bow on top of it. twisting the two bows together with that chenille stem. And again, I'll fuss with it to get it where I'd like it, and then I'll trim off all the excess raffia. The few strands of raffia, I'll attach the key to the bow. And I'll tie it right around the center of my bow. And I cut away the excess bulk in the back. I glue the bow front and center of the heart. Adding some glue to the loops to keep them in place. The last thing to do is to add the lights. I'll just push the lights right into those holes. They'll fit perfectly. Ta-da! Look how pretty. 
this is the perfect centerpiece for your Valentine window display. I hope you liked this rustic Lego part and enjoyed watching. Supplies are in the description box. I want to thank Indiana Jones for hosting and all of the lovely and talented plaid ambassadors. My plaid product word is floating medium. It's one of my favorites. Remember, watch, like, and comment the plaid products mentioned in each video to be eligible to win the gift box. Best of luck. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.